welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And wow, as we all know, I was celebrating Black History Month, uh, the whole month of February. And I tell you, celebrating Black History Month meaning understanding a lot of things that happen, um, you know, to Black people all over the world, not just in the United States. And how, in a lot of situations uh, where we got where we are today, how we got there, and the history behind a lot of these things, oh, we got a guy that's on today. Uh, I tell you, let me see if I talk about him in a minute. This guy is so incredible, a whole lot of history. I'm just gonna say, if you haven't watched the movie, I'm gonna stop. Go out and watch it again. Uh, because uh, we got one of the, the great, great, great grandson that's going to join us that was part of that, that's here today. And I'm just so excited. So wherever you guys watching us from, was you watching us from E36 television, Roku TV, Apple TV, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, over 55 other major platforms. All you have to do is just go to the comments. Ask any question that you might have and just become part of the conversation. You know, so as you know, I cannot do anything without Dr. Michelle Cooley, the executive producer, or uh, introducing the show, chatting it up, and just uh, uh, excited that uh, we got this guest on. So how you doing today, Dr. Michelle Cooley? I'm doing fine, James. Um, this is going to be an amazing show. Uh, me and you just re-watched Amistad a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've never seen it, but I know you have. And you watched it again. It, it was just amazing um, to learn all of this um, history. And we're going to just have this great conversation with this amazing guest and talk about how his family history and, and just everything and that encompasses it. So really excited. I'm excited, uh, you know, because uh, and then it got me want to watch it again, again, since, uh, since I know uh, that uh, we, uh, you know, it got somebody on that's, uh, you know, uh, that's going to tell us a little bit about it. But not only this, I want uh, the world to know the today's. Uh, that this gentleman that Michelle is getting ready to introduce is the first brand um, brand ambassador for race to be Africa and Saron. And he's gonna he's gonna pronounce it the right way, but this this announcement is coming out today. He has been an, appointed as that highly prestigious position. So I want to just say congratulations before we even get started with the show. You know, so I'll tell you what, Michelle, can you please introduce the title of the show, the purpose of the show, and introduce this absolutely wonderful guest that we got? Oh, most definitely. So to tie the title of today's show is Facing History in Ourselves as Children of One God. And we're having a sit down discussion with um, this man has so many hats. He's an educator, an author, a developer of public health community projects, a volunteer instructor, member of the U.S. Foreign Services, and so many more. It's Samuel H. Pia. And he's going to talk about why the Amistad story is relevant to human history, why the story has not been more widely known and spoken about before the movie, and what's his lineage with the Amistad story and the lessons from his family history history attributable to the Amistad story. So Samuel H. Pia and his spouse, Clara Denise Johnson, have served communities in Mississippi, Tennessee, several African countries and Caribbean countries like Cuba and Haiti before retiring in Rossville, Tennessee in 2022. Samuel was born and raised in Sierra Leone until 1967 when he migrated to the U.S. for further education and experience. Clara was born and raised in Mississippi until 1980 when she and Samuel migrated to Sierra Leone with their children health care for Samuel's parents and contribute to healthy and functional education in Sierra Leone. They returned to Memphis for medical evaluation and care for the youngest child's medical condition in 1987. 
Samuel and Clara met in the heart of the Mississippi Delta at Mississippi Valley State University. Samuel taught and developed the public environmental health undergraduate degree program and pledged with Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Clara graduated with a BS degree in biology and chemistry. The couple moved to Sierra Leone in 1980 and Clara taught in American history, American Mission School for Girls, while Samuel managed public health community development projects throughout Sierra Leone until 1987 when they had a return to care for their children. There is so much to talk about with this gentleman, but I would be here all day reading his biography. So I'm going to let him tell it. And we ask the question. So please welcome to the show, Mr. Samuel Hinga Pia. Samuel, my man, how are you doing today? I am doing so well to hear you two on the show and uh, just excited that the divine spirit led me to you and you have been open, you've opened your arms and your heart to welcome me in your forum. I am so happy to have you on the show. Uh, so many things that Michelle just mentioned that, that you're doing. Uh, most importantly, is the gift of humanity. A lot of people do not understand that. Uh, humanity, they do not understand trust. They do not understand giving. They do not understand this thing called respect. You are all of that and then some. You know, so, but my friend, first of all, I want to congratulate you on being named uh, the brand, let me make sure I get it right, Bas brand ambassador for Race to Build Africa and Simone Leone. Uh, first of all, can you tell our viewers and listeners, before we get into that, a little bit about you? I know Michelle mentioned a lot, but uh, can you tell our viewers and our listeners uh, where you was born, what led you on the path that you on and why are, are you so passionate about bringing help and care to others and then we're gonna get off into the movie and stuff like that i love i love you the movie I, I i love it and a lot of people need to have a better understanding of that so first of all can you please tell our, our viewers a little bit about you where you grew up what keeps you so passionate Thank you, thank you, Dr. Conley. And uh, definitely it's a pleasure to be in your show. And uh, you and your partner, your soulmate, your co-worker, I mean, it's, it just gives me joy to work with both of you. And I am just convinced the more I travel all over the world, the more I understand the purpose and the will of God for all of us. It doesn't matter what village you come from, what city you come from, what race, what nationality, there is God present to lift you up when the need arises. I was born in Sierra Leone, a very small country on the west coast of Africa. I used to tell my students that if you if you have very good eyesight and if you lay your, your head at the, at the beaches of Freetown, you will see New York across the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, Sierra Leone just lies right there. And we have been very fortunate to have a very, very strong relationship with the United States of America and the British government, UK, United Kingdom. It's not been easy. It's not been easy. I grew up with six other brothers and two sisters, and we have a very large family. My father and my mother met when he was attending the mission, American missionary schools and mission work in Sierra Leone after the release of the Amistad Africans. They, they started their work in the south and southeastern part of Sierra Leone. And my father was one of those first people who attended the mission schools. He started teaching and then evangelizing, and then he became a pastor. He succeeded the first African bishop who was working in Tayama, Dr. B.A. Kiru, Benjamin Kiru. 
And uh, I was just talking to his eldest son this morning, Dr. George Kiru, who is still in Freetown. He has worked all over. And there was so much competition for somebody to, sub, to follow Bishop Kiru's position in Tayama. But God finally appointed my father to assume that role in Tayama, which is the biggest church, uh, United Methodist, uh, American United Methodist, EUB, United Brethren Church um, Institution of Faith in that country. However, with so many salaries, we are so, so low for my father that none of us had any possibility of going beyond high school education. But the grace of God, a missionary, Dr. Charles Leader, who had worked in Sierra Leone for 20 years, had retired to his hometown in Indiana, uh, wrote a letter to my parents and said, hey, if any of your children can come to the US, you buy their tickets. Once they come here, they have room and board in our home. Uh, my dad just put that letter mm -hmm. away. I finally found that letter and I took it to my dad. I said, why don't you just offer this to all of us? And I was the one that got the privilege. I raised some chicken and some live goats and uh, we were, I was able to raise some money and I went to my the rest of the relatives. A particular person who stands out is the Reverend Eustace Renner. Uh, Eustace Renner was a young Sierra Leonean who had gone to UK and the United States and studied. He came back to lead the mission work in Sierra Leone for young people. He was such a motivator, not only of me, but a lot of other young people in Sierra Leone. He had given me that position to raise the awareness of young people. And I thank God for he and his wife and his family. They supported me and they motivated me. I was able to come to the US and I stayed with the leaders. Uh, we, I played soccer for the Grace College in Winona Lake, Indiana. I was a defensive back. Believe it or not, Brother Cooley, I never was called to play soccer in Sierra Leone. Uh, I was not good enough. But when I came to Indiana, the cheering, the practice, the motivation, and of course, the, 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 the scholarship to attend college just <laughs> brought up all the talents in me. I mean, I was a cheer full person that everybody cheered when we go to play soccer. We won the conference in Indiana that year. So I tell my young friends, I say, don't ever give up. God is available to help you, to motivate you, to bring you to a limelight where you can use your talents for the benefit of other people as well as yourself. Hold so that though. It, hold, hold, hold that though. We got to take a station break. But you already got me excited. We're going to take a station break. And we're gonna pick it up uh with the sam you're talking about the college then we did then we're gonna go off into a couple other things so what whichever platform that you're watching us on if you want to be part of the conversation all you have to do just go to the comments ask any question that you might have i promise you we'll get you an answer yes your life and uh, we'll see you shortly after the break really get a chance to know who you are and once you know who you are you truly know who you are. Love who you are. Love who you are. You're a masterpiece. Love who you are. Love who you were born to be. Love, love me some me. That's what I'm talking about. When you leave high school, you gotta know today or tomorrow, hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. In everything that you do.
welcome back to James Cooley Show. It's your life. And I just got to my fantastic guest is Sammy Wright. You know, just the way you explain things, it kind of kind of draw you in and you kind of have a vision of what he's saying. And, and so many things fall under believing in yourself and just uh, giving it up to God and, and letting God uh, handle a lot of situations and circumstances. Uh, Case in point, uh, uh, he said that uh, his family didn't have the, the support or, or money to, uh, to uh, send them anything past high school. And just by the grace of God, uh, had uh, friends and family in the United States that had to send them over here. And uh, I'll make sure they're taken care of. Uh, Sammy, take that opportunity. And, and I tell you, if you see what this man that we can really find out in a few minutes, uh, what he's doing and just the impact that he having on so many people, so many countries, and literally be real with you, the history of a uh, 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 black folk like myself. Until with the story, we're gonna talk about Amistad in a minute, uh, but uh, just facing history and ourselves. As children of God, that's that's so powerful. And uh, I want to say, Samuel, can can you tell our viewers and listeners why you chose that topic? What's the importance of that for today's discussion? For me, it's very significant. It made a real transforming impact on me the more I learned about my parents, what they went through, and the more I learned about the global community, what they went through, and the fact that even in the world, we have some people on one side of the fence, the others on the other side of the fence, but believe me, because of the grace of God and the power of God, there are still people out in different parts of the fence that are willing and able to come together to solicit and to campaign and to support harmony among diversity. Our diversity is so special, so unique. And as a teacher of anatomy and physiology, for example, I tell my students when we dissected the pig and we looked at the structure of human being when we studied all the senses the systems the digestive system the respiratory system is the same as in the pig as in human beings but when you deal with the outside you see such a diverse difference and i have emphasized that three things that really we all need to really assess and understand and participate in the process. That is getting knowledge. What is knowledge? Either you go to school or you go to church or you travel, you visit friends, you interact with other people, you play soccer, you play football, basketball, whatever. You can learn from that. You can get knowledge from those. But when you get your knowledge, look at your attitude. How grateful are you? How appreciative are you? How thankful are you? How respectful? Those are attitudinal characteristics. And the third one is actions. Do you take actions based on what you know, based on your attitude? What actions do you take to help improve life and living, not only for yourself, but for people, other children of God everywhere? And I think the Amistad movie even revealed that to me, how I met Debbie Allen, how I met Steven Spielberg, how I was able to contact uh, Dr. Arthur Abraham, who had been running away from Sierra Leone because of the civil war. I had to contact his wife in, free, in, in Washington, D.C. She linked me up. So, you know, it just happened in such a way that when I put all those together. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to start from, that was going to be my next question, is uh, uh, the Amistad uh, movie. First of all, can you summarize what the movie is about real quickly and can you tell our viewers and listeners what is your lineage to the Amistad story? 
The Amistad is a story for all of us. The Amistad is about people who were a little bit gluttonous and selfish, but they were committed to looking for food and support anywhere they can, in any way they can, without even considering the emotional and the uh, spiritual dimension of things. They participated in slave enslavement of people to do the work so that they can have better life. Forgetting the fact that those people who are being used to build the world are also children of God. They would need some support. They would need some nice place to stay. They would need health care and access to food. All right, the Amistad Africans were brought into slavery. They were sold in Cuba and taken to the plantation to work for the Cuban uh, pl plantation owners. For as, as God will have it, Sengbe, sitting down, meditating, was able to just create through the spirit of God that, you know, this is not the real history that God intends us to be. He was able to, 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 to unchain himself and he went and unchained the others and they were able to be, to, to be equipped with what was readily available in that ship and they took over the ship. In their effort to come back to Africa, they were lost and they were found in Connecticut. And the Cubans were claiming them as their property, uh, but they were not properties. And the laws of America was not necessarily in that favor, in their favor, but mainly because the then president of America was so selfish, was looking for his re-election so he did not want to really apply justice at the expense of the, the southern states who believed in slavery or enslavement. And so those angles were all at play. But people of God in Connecticut came together and rallied around and convinced John Quincy Adam, a retired president, somebody who really learned so much from uh, uh, Simbe during their conversations, Simbi told him, he said, you know, it's not impossible. He said, call upon the spirits of your ancestors in America and use that and um, encourage them to do the right thing. You know, I was just talking to one of the Sierra Unions in Columbus, Ohio lately, Mr. Ngabe, and also uh, Paramount Chief Sheriff. And they, 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 uh, they convinced me that that was one of the most powerful part of the defense of Simbe Pierre in the Supreme Court of the United States. Let's don't forget that we are all here by the creator. You know where your son or daughter came from, how they came into place. And if we can just understand that and treat everybody with some dignity and respect, we have a better world, believe me. That's the Amistad story. Wow, well, can you uh, tell our viewers and listeners what your lineage is? Uh, uh, to the story. Third generation, great, great grandson. I have my brothers who are in, in Michigan, Dr. Patrick Pierre, who taught at the University of Michigan and uh, Wayne County Community College, and Dr. Michael Pierre, who is a physician in at Bowman Hospital. In fact, right now he's in Sierra Leone with 20 doctors providing health care in Sierra Leone. And my sister, uh, unfortunately, I just came from Dallas last night. She has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she's thriving. We're praying for her. My sister, my younger sister traveled with us. My wife and I and our children have been praying and been serving. My wife is from Itabina, Mississippi. She and her parents really supported us. And we went back to Sierra Leone to help take care of our parents who were sick and, and retired. They needed our help. And uh, the Amistad is about us facing history and ourselves. Let us really take time to understand our history. Was it that great? No, there were some bad things as human beings. But like Joseph, huh? like Abraham, like all the bi biblical people would think of, they have gone through some, excuse my Swahili, hell in life but there were people with conscience, people with commitment to make things better than what it was then. Wow. Kadaji Woodson, 
Ida B. Wells, Rosa Parks, those are great heroes and sheroes that we should really learn from their own experience and see what we can do to make a better world, not only for ourselves, but for the rest of people. Hey, Sam, how yes, difficult was it for you to convince Steven Spielberg, Debbie Allen, Robert Neer, all, all of those folks to come together, the writers, uh, to put this together and actually put it in play. Was that a very a difficult task uh, when you met with them? Uh, or did they understand uh, what you was asking them and, and the decision that they made that was going to open the eyes of so many people around the world? Can you talk about that a little bit? We got about three minutes before the break. So, you know, uh, Brother Cooley, I did not have to do much. It was all laid down by the Spirit of God. I, my wife and I went to New Orleans to go to a diabetes conference, and I happened to just go to the uh, Amistad Research Center in New Orleans. And while I was there, Debbie Allen called there to find out whether any African or any relative of, of Simbi Pierre has been in that place. I had no clue. They called me from the stacks, and I came and talked with Debbie Allen. The rest is history how I met Steven Spielberg, uh, how I was able to bring Dr. Arthur Abrams in. It's all, everything was just laid down so much. That's why I believe it's a spiritual divine intervention. I did not have to do much work. Once the <laughs> spirit of God is there, everything went through. And you know what, man? And, and I, I, I hope uh, folks understand what you're saying. Long as the spirit of God there, as long as you're doing the right thing, he will guide us. He will lead us. He will direct us. He will bring people in our lives uh, to help us out with our purpose because that's his purpose. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I tell you, we're going to take a station break, but I can't wait to get back to continue to talk to the brand ambassador for of, of Bill uh, Africa. Back to Africa, not back to Africa, but building Africa. And I tell you what, if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is go to the comments. On which platform that you're watching us on, ask any question that you might have. I promise you we'll get you an answer. It's your life. And we'll see you shortly after break. States of America and I am here to just say first of all I'm so happy and honored to be on it to be in the Coffee Book 2023 20, Unify Brain Z and the other organizations thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this collection
Noah Dingley here, producer of The James Cooley Show, It's Your Life. And the new audio version of James' book, Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, is a must-have. James shares his true life story of struggle and success in America. It's both a cautionary tale and a roadmap to achieving the American dream. Get the new audio version of Country Boy, City Boy, A Journey That Ain't Over Yet, by James Cooley on Amazon.com or wherever audiobooks are sold. Hello, welcome back to James Cooley Show. It's your life and just sitting here chatting, which is absolutely fantastic, man. Who's doing so many great things? Yes. Uh, and uh, we have new scratch the surface. Okay. Uh, because uh, here in this segment, I want to get off into uh, him being newly appointed uh, today, you know, on my show. And uh, I'm so excited about. Uh, um, all of the great things that you want. And uh, right now, uh, we've got an initiative on that's led by uh, Dr. Sunshine, the great, great friend of mine, Dr. Lisa Cogney. I'm sure both of them, if they can, they are watching the show already. And and this great man uh, that, that we're chatting with today, Samuel, because he was just appointed as the a brand ambassador for Race to Build Africa in Salon, uh, Sierra. And I tell you, um, he's going to tell us a, a little bit about this and, and how this movement for his refocus Africa is taking, I'm talking about this, it's building, it's growing, it's going to help so many countries. So many people, it's going to bring the connection together to the United States, Europe, and a lot of other uh, different uh, uh, countries and continents to be a part of this great movement. And uh, so I want to congratulate you, Samuel, for being named the brand ambassador. But can you tell our, our viewers and listeners a little bit more in detail of what this entails? Thank you, Brother Cooley. Race to Build Africa was just introduced to me a few weeks ago, and uh, I have talked to Dr. Lisa and Dr. Sunshine and Mr. Cornelius Jones of Tennessee, who provided fuel for the uh, Amistad replica boat. Uh, that several years ago, I met him in Connecticut, and uh, he has been a great motivator and partner to, to link me with diverse group of people. He, in fact, he introduced me to Dr. Shunshine and Dr. Lisa. And uh, the race to build Africa is intended to empower young people in knowledge, attitude, and behavior. It's intended to also empower local farmers for food security in their respective environments. It's also there for community health improvement. Those three areas are, for now, basic areas we like to. In fact, uh, I met Dr. Sunshine and Dr. Lisa and Brother Cornelius Jones, who have introduced me to a diverse group of people in Washington, D.C., and we are in touch with the government of Sierra Leone uh, to look at the river right by the bank of the Tyre River, a, a river that was so clean when I was going to primary school, a, a river that even provided safe water and clean water for the whole community, but it has been polluted and contaminated by uh, gold diggers or gold miners and other miners, uh, industrial exploited, exploiters in the northern parts of the river bed. So there is a plan by CJ and uh, the OMO technology and, 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 and resources to do something about treating the river water and treating it so that they can provide safe water to the people of Tayama. 
Wow. You know, it's uh, it seemed like it's uh, I have talked to Dr. Lisa, uh, more so her than Dr. Sancho many, many times about this initiative. And it's it just sounds so wonderful. But uh, it's going to be doing so many things uh, for others, especially in your native country. Um, and the study primarily is being conducted there. And um, I, I'm excited one day to potentially <laughs> uh, be following you there uh, mm-hmm. and be a part of uh, a lot of the things that uh, you and Dr. Sunshine and Dr. Lisa is doing. I mean, I, I, I believe in this, and I think we need to get many, many others to uh, uh, believe as well. So um, this initiative is started, is this initiative that started in the United States, or did it start over? I know uh, Dr. Sunshine is in Tanzania right now. Uh, did it start there? And how did it, you know, accumulate where the ball is rolling and getting bigger and bigger and bigger because this information is so much needed. The resources is so much needed, clean water, uh, food, uh, humanities. And that's, I still bring it back to humanity. Like we started the show. It's so important when you believe on your respect and especially when you have the love of God, which places the love of others also in your heart and your mind and you just want to do so many things that's in your power to do can you talk about that a little bit you know there is so much power in what god has given every one of us we are blessed and we should be grateful for what god has done for us generally being honest and having strong visible moral principles. A person with integrity acts ethically and does the right thing even behind closed door. That's integrity. And you know, whatever relationship we're going to establish, whether it's diplomatic relationship or Christian relationship, whatever trade relationship one develops, if you have contentment, and you have faith in the humanity of the people you're dealing with, you're exchanging with, you can go higher and longer and safer. So this race to build Africa has been going on in Tanzania and uh, uh, Zanzibar, East Africa. And again, when God wants to step in, they'll bring in. That's how I met uh, CJ Jones. He introduced me to Dr. Sunshine and Dr. Lisa. We, would, we hope the people of Sierra Leone would welcome us, will embrace us. I have sent all the information to the embassy in Washington, D.C., uh, hoping, hoping that uh, the staff will share with the ambassador. And uh, hopefully sometime this year, Dr. Lisa, Dr. Sunshine, CJ, and myself, and a very strong colleague in in Sierra Leone. I've talked to the Minister of uh, Environment and also my colleague there, uh, Dr. Mr. Kaitibi, is working to harvest and make connections there. We hope to make it big. We hope to bring a radio station. Hopefully, you know, Brother Cooley, I'm counting on you. We need to open a radio station that will really address our relationship, the relationship between America and Africa. I, w- I would do one better than that. All right. If I went, I would do a, a live worldwide television show and radio show. All right. And you had All mentioned right. something earlier All right. uh, about attitude. Attitude requires focus. At, if you don't have the right attitude, you are not going to get nothing done. Mm-hmm. Are you going to react? So I want to play this short video on attitude and what how attitude is so important to success is so important to anything so bear with me for about two and a half minutes here we go okay a stand for attitude commitment and enthusiasm let's talk about the a attitude a lot of times 
we are confronted with things or in situations and we often react because we're not, for one thing, walking around with the right attitude where we get an opportunity to think. Attitude will make or break you. Most of the time, the first thing, depending on where you're at with your attitude, you want to react. You want to hit. You want to say something. You want to do the first thing that come to your mind. We all have this split second, this split second, where we can think about it. Somebody bump into you or say something, we can think about it. I need to dream big, think big, and be big. Be big is not in statue. It's in heart and it's in mind. You don't always have to react when you're confronted with a negative situation. Let me talk about the C in ACE. The C stands for commitment. What does the C stand for? What does the C stand for? In order to be committed to anything, you must be committed to yourself. And what I mean by committed to yourself, you must be committed to you telling the truth, you being honest with yourself, regardless what it is. Enthusiasm, just like I mentioned to you, is being excited. Just being excited just because you was able to wake up this morning. I mean, I'm excited. I woke up, the, the good Lord gave me another day, I'm happy. That's why I'm, 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 I'm happy about it and I'm gonna walk around. I cannot be walking around mad at the world or pissed off about something. Uh, mommy wouldn't let me do that, daddy. Say they did all these things, I'm just so, come on. Put that energy toward a positive thing. Just like Michelle Obama said, when they swing low, you what? Attitude, commitment, and enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, Brother Samuel, I thought that was so important because uh, what you all are doing with race to be, uh, build Africa, bringing all these nations together, uh, just uh, everything that I know about it, it, it requires a right attitude. And that means honesty, integrity, and ethics. Honesty, integrity, and ethics. Uh, so those are the type of things that I, when I'm speaking, I'm, I, I, I just, I'm just a positive type of person, uh, built, uh, you know, Lord on the God principles for his purpose for me. And that's why this interview with you is so easy today because I feel it. Do you I, I feel it. And, um, wow. And just the history that we talked about, I'm gonna start all this family generation just and 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 things that happened in the past. My thing, what where I want people to get from this is we have to live in the present. However, we have to plan for the future, for generations, generations to come. And I'm so impressed with you, brother, uh, uh, with what you're doing. Uh, and it's in one hour, you can't pack everything into one hour uh, because it's so much. It probably takes about two, three hours uh, to do this. But uh, what you, Dr. Lisa, Dr. Sunshine, Dr. Jones, uh, and all of the other folks are doing, I, I, salute you and what are your thoughts on attitude being the primary source and focus to success you hit it all off 
Attitude, probably that's why they started it with an A, is the first thing that can either make you or break you. And I want to just say thank you to the Shelby County Winchester School of Excellence and the teachers at this school, Brother Cooley, they just had a program on Friday where I was invited to be a guest speaker. Uh, you have a lot of Turkish people in, in, in Memphis. You're, they, the school is located in the African-American community and the principal is determined and committed to harmonize the people of this community. And I was able to see people from almost a very diverse background. All the Greek organizations in the schools at University of Memphis, Le Moyne Owen College, Shelby State Community College, I mean, the neighboring schools, uh, Mississippi Valley State University was represented by Mrs. Burns and her daughter. It was such a good feeling. The athletics department, the, 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 the coaches of the basketball team at Le Moyne Owen were present there just to encourage people to have the right attitude to take advantage of the lessons from history and to see how we can correct the wrong that has been done or the wrong that is still taking place in our cities and in our communities. So attitude is phenomenal. It is the, I think it's the primus inter Paris, first among equals. And I strongly advocate that our commitment should not be selfish. Our commitment should be very enthusiastic. Our commitment should be towards positivity and ethics. You know, what you cannot do in your room, then you, you're not ethical, you know. So whatever you're going to say out in public, leave it to the fullest. Hold that thought. We got to take a quick station break with you on the side. Honesty, et honesty integrity, and ethics. We're going to take a quick station break. We're going to come back. We have about six minutes left in the show. I don't want to end this. All right. We're going to take a station break and we're going to come back with some more Samuel. Yes, your life. And I want everybody listen to this man. I want you to walk around with a smile on your face and say, I can. I can. It's your life. We'll see you shortly after the break. I see the smile convey I love you. I'm proud of who you are. The one that keeps us close when we're apart. Walking from the darkness of all that we've been through. It seems that there might be Behind the loneliness we know and live again, life of James Cooley, show it your life. And first of all, 
I, I, I want to thank uh, <laughs> oh, first of all, we just went over 43,000 subscribers on YouTube alone, and we're on 55 plus platforms, but 43,000 on one platform subscribers. And I'm looking at the numbers here. Uh, we have 2,500 people watching on YouTube alone, uh, all over the world. Um, uh, wow, whatever you're saying, brother Samuel, <laughs> it is resonating, you know. So, uh, I just want to keep it going now, Samuel. We only got like four and a half minutes left in the show, but brother, let me tell you something, I gotta have you back on again. It's mandatory. I'm gonna have you, Dr. Lisa, Dr. Sunshine, Dr. Jones. I want all you guys on at the same time. And we're going to talk about the race to uh, build half of Africa. You know, so um, I, I will set that up with Lisa and Dr. Sunshine real soon. But uh, your message today is so powerful. And it also brings a sense of, you mentioned something, because I always talk about this thing called honesty, integrity, and ethics. And ethics to me, is doing the right thing. Integrity is always keeping your word. Uh, honesty, integrity, and ethics means uh, that, especially from integrity's perspective, if you're in a room by yourself, you're anywhere by yourself, you're going to do the right thing even, even when no one is watching you. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me say that again. Yeah. You're going to do the right thing even when no one is watching, you. is watching you you know so that's just how powerful that is right there um you know so uh wow closing remarks from you what do you want people to get from this conversation that we're just having and now we're down to like two and a half minutes so if you can pack all of that into that <laughs> Yeah. So, Brother Sammy, I'm turning it back over to you, man. Okay, Brother Cooley. I, you know, hey, time is made for us and it can end anytime. So, for me, I look at one minute, it's enough for me to share my, my message. I know that when the right time comes, when God, the Spirit of God is with you and you have the right attitude, and you are very much unselfish, you have some integrity, you can do miracles. For example, Sierra Leone has been independent since 1961. There has been several governments in that, gov that country. It is only in 2019 that the president of Sierra Leone recognized a descendant of Sungu Pierre and gave an award to. I am not in any rush, but I strongly believe that the kind of people we are reaching today will have open mind, we have a nice attitude, and we'll be people with integrity to make sure that we do the right thing so that future leaders, future generations will not go through the kind of stress we're going through. We don't want to go to where Russia is going to. We, know we, we, we want to treat Africa and Africans all over the world with great respect, and appreciation for what they have contributed to our national and global development. I thank you very much, and I look forward to really interacting with your audience, uh, with Dr. Dr. Lisa and Dr. Cornelius Jones, so that we can really throw some light on what we want to do on this race to build Africa. Africa has a lot of potential, and it's we depend on all of us to rally around to make a difference. I think I think you're so, I want you to stick around uh, after uh, we, we get ready to close off, but stick around, please. You know, I tell you, I hope that uh, you all, my audience, got as much from this conversation with Samuel as I did. Most important, understanding your history, doesn't matter where your black, white, green, gold, or purple, we all gotta live together. We all had to respect each other together. We all had to live together. 
most important thing that I, I say is in order to be successful, you got to want to. You got to want to love, not hate. So, Samuel will be back on the show again real soon, along with Dr. Jones, Dr. Lisa, Dr. Sunshine. And as always, I, I want all of you up to always, always dream big, think big, and be big at everything that you do. We'll be at the same time, same place. Is your life, and we'll see you then.